When people ask me what I do, and I tell them that I work on gender and tax, I get mixed reactions. There are those who are confused. Gender and tax? What does that even mean? There are those who are excited. Ooh, gender and tax. Tell me more. And then there are those who roll their eyes in exhaustion or sigh. You're not one of those women. I am one of those women. You see, the research that we've undertaken at the International Center for Tax and Development shows that while taxation is a neutral instrument on the face of it, many times men and women experience it in different ways. And this is for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's a lower level of education of women that makes taxes less accessible. Other times it's their overrepresentation in certain economic activities. And sometimes it's the services that they pay for, the public services that they contribute to it. And so I decided to write a poem. It's called The Gender of Tax. Hundreds of laws and decades in tax administration. I never heard about gender and taxation. Now all of a sudden there is a sensation, perhaps even an obsession with the gender dimensions of taxation. What's that about? Well, a small portion of us, we pay income taxes, but no, not the mechanics of tax computations. Shady tax collectors, they take advantage of us, profiteering from our scanty tax knowledge. In the markets, we toll from dawn to dusk, paying twice as much as men in toilet taxes. We hold our bladders, dismiss calls to quench our thirst, while men drink and piss in nearby bushes. For my small shop in Chikubo, I pay as much as Mwame Mukasa, even though my earnings be quarter a portion of his. Size apparently matters not when it comes to trade licensing fees, dues dictated by location and nature of trade. These taxes, which should be neutral, are in fact gendered by the size of my earnings, the nature of my trade, the services I consume, and sometimes even my limited representation in the corridors of power. And yet still, I wake up every morning, wear my smile and a touch of lipstick, masking the wounds of my battered spirit. I cannot let these taxes smother my joy or mute my laughter. I will not let these taxes kill the audacity of my determination, let alone fracture the grace to which I hope. I am the hope of my daughters. I am the house that shelters the dreams of my sons. And so I will keep this business running. It's the only way I know how to be. In fact, it's the only way I survive.